Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Part two, one of the craziest things I saw while locked up. Man, I could do a hundred parts on this. I done seen so much stupidity. What people would do for hunger. Just dumb individuals in general. Yeah, I done seen it. Let's relive it. Now, when I think back on these things, there are so many stupid, just stupid things I saw that it's, it's hard to digest sometimes. So many disgusting things I saw that a lot of it I won't even talk about. I got to try to keep it PG-13. So we're going to do some of them stories today. I think the first one I'm going to get into is another story on Duck. And if you're, you're, you're a viewer, you're a sub, you know, fan of the channel, then you've heard of Duck. Duck is a guy that I've talked about in the past that Duck was paranoid of getting jumped and really didn't have a good fight game. So Duck always kept poop in his toilet. At all, you know, given moments and times, there was shit floating right in the toilet bowl. His celly would shit, he would shit, he would say, don't flush that, because Duck would pick up the poop out the toilet if you ran up on him smack you with it or smear it on himself and it would keep you from messing with duck that's the backdrop on who duck is right duck would do something one day that is just utterly unbelievable man it's just one of the things that you had to be there and i had seen things similar to what i'm about to tell you just not to the extreme of what duck did so most prisons are placed out in places where there is nothing. That's how they do it. That way, if you escape, your chances of getting to mainland, to civilization, to a house, or to somebody you can carjack or anything like that to make a getaway are slim to none. A lot of them are set in your swamps. They're set up in the mountains. They're set out in the hillside of the countries. Like I said, that way if somebody gets out, chances are when they catch you, they're going to find your ass in the woods. So we had a very, very bad problem with mice. You might, and I've had it happen more times than I can count. Go to sleep, wake up in the morning, go to grab something out your locker, grab something out your box where your food is stored at, and everything be nibbled on. And the mice, man, these little son of a bitches, they don't just chew on something and go away. They will taste test everything in your bag, everything in your box. They will chew a hole in every bag of chips, every candy bar, every soup. Unless you catch them and stop them, they will do this. And when you wake up, all your commissary will be ruined. So we hated the mice. The old guys, like the lifers, I think they just needed anybody to bond with. So a couple of them had pet mice. Well, this mouse, man, one of the guys in there, he runs a store box, and he is throwing away so much food. You know, they were everybody was concerned and convinced that mice carry disease. If it's nibbled on your food, you can't eat it. You can't sell it. It has to get thrown away. So big dude, Big T, takes the his box of stuff. He gets up one morning, and he's up there snapping, pissed off. The mice have been in his cell. We used to make these little things out of newspaper. We would roll up and, you know, put underneath our door to keep the mice from being able to come in. Well, the damn mice have found a way in their cell. They didn't chew this thing, got in there. He comes out that morning. He is snapping. I mean, just pissed off. These mice have done ruined like $100 in commissary. They got in there and just, you know, went ham on the food. He takes the food over to the trash can and dumps the whole box into the trash can. Now, you've got the guys in the pod that don't care much about, you know, if a mice chewed on something, they don't care that it went in the trash can. whole bunch of different dudes like, shit, that's still good to eat. I don't care if a mice chewed on it. I don't care if the mouse, you know what I mean, went up in the package. So all these different dudes go to the trash can and get this commissary out that he just dumped in the trash can. Okay, cool. Whatever. Doesn't shock me. Seen much worse. I've seen people actually eat out the trash. It wouldn't be... Maybe two, three days later, man, one of the dudes in the pod wakes up in the middle of the night, 
Here's this commissary being messed with. Looks down. The mouse is in the box. He puts the lid on the box and catches the box. Catches the mouse in the box. Keeps it in there overnight. The next morning, he comes out and he's telling dudes, like, yo, I, I caught one of those mice last night, right? And dudes are telling him, you know, flush it down the toilet, flush it down the toilet. And I had seen people do some extreme things to the mice. They hated the mice. The mice ain't have a chance. I'd seen them put the mice in the little trash can that we have in our cell and take it over to the hot water pot that pushes out water that's 190 degrees and fill the trash can up and boil these little dudes. Kill them that way. I'd seen them get stepped on. I'd seen dudes stomp them. I'd seen them, you know, go down Hershey Highway, straight throw them straight down the toilet bowl, flush their asses and they be gone. Well, he's got this mouse trapped in his box and he's trying to decide what to do with it. And Duck tells him, Duck comes over out the blue and it's just kind of, Duck's a weird dude. It's just standing there listening to everybody talk. And dudes are talking about what he should do with the mouse, you know, how to get rid of the mouse. You can't let it free back in the pocket because it's going to start eating. You take it outside the building and let it go, it makes its way back in the building and starts eating. Duck is standing there looking all confused and dumb in the face. And out of nowhere, he goes, I'll eat it. Everybody kind of pauses for a second. All talk between us stops. Everybody kind of looks over at Duck like, what? He's like, yeah, somebody pays me. I'll eat it. What y'all gonna pay me to eat it? I said, this dude ain't about to eat no mouse, man. This is what I'm thinking to myself. Like, he's crazy, but he ain't that crazy. He's snatching ass right now. He's wailing. He ain't about to eat this mouse, man. So T comes over. T's like, you gonna eat the mouse? He's like, yeah, what you gonna pay me? So I'll give you a bag of coffee. Duck's like, nah, I'm not eating a, I'm not eating no mouse for no bag of coffee, man. It's like $2.67 for the Keefe Black Bag, a Colombian roast, right? So they get the price up, man. It ends up being like $20 that Duck agrees on to eat this mouse. And Duck tells him, y'all bring me the commissary, you know what I mean? And uh, I'll eat the mouse. I'm not going to eat it. And then y'all buck on me and don't pay me. I told you Duck was a paranoid dude. They bring Duck to, they bring Duck to commissary and they got it in a bag tied up. And they sit it down there like, as soon as you eat it, that's yours. They kick the bag over by his feet. Duck opens the lid. The mouse is trying to jump out. So they take the mouse in the cell and block the door. So if the mouse gets loose, you know, it can't go anywhere. Don't take Duck long. He reaches down the box. Boom. Grabs the little mouse and is holding it. Telling the dudes, y'all going, y'all sure? That's mine, right? That's mine. And it's the moment they convinced him that was his commissary, Duck threw his damn mouse in his mouth, chewed it up, and swallowed. After he chewed, he opened his mouth. I didn't look. As soon as I seen him go to open his mouth and show, I turned my head, and dude started gagging. Dude was like, you nasty, you nasty, you disgusting, man, there's something wrong with you. Like, he chewed this little nasty-ass mouse up and swallowed it. Sun's getting bright. It's early. I thought it was over with the whole chewing the mouse up situation, but it wasn't. I told you a couple of the lifers in there had mice, and they had them as pets. You know, some of them, they had made little mouse houses out of CD cases. Like, you know, the CD cases, plastic, they taken these things and glued them together, made like little mouse mazes, tape on them that the mice lived in. One of the lifers ends up slapping duck all up. Gets mad about the mouse. You could have brought it to me. He ain't do nothing to you. He's ahead just like we are. He's hungry. Why you eat the mouse? Bow, bow, bow. Slaps Duck all up. That's why Duck ended up spazzing out the way he did, I'm guessing. Because, you know, later on, man, he had a bunch of dudes try to jump him. They bashed him in his head with a rock. But, yeah, man, Duck was crazy. That's the first one for you. The second one I could think about is this dude named D.C., now, D.C. was with the Aryan Brotherhood. And I'm going to do a video on, on that here coming up. D.C. was doing 35 years. He was young, 20 years old. He robbed a couple 7-Elevens with a BB gun. When they caught D.C., they caught him with the BB gun. But here in Virginia, it doesn't matter if it's a real gun, a fake gun, a BB gun, a paper gun. If you rob somebody... And you have them under the impression that you are armed. That is an armed robbery. D.C. were going to get 35 years for these three robberies. 20 years old. 
he was in there, young, impressionable, fat boy, probably 5'11", 5'10", and just fat. Don't know how much he weighed. He was fat. You know what I mean? Like a big-ass fat kid. DC would do stupid things for commissary. He'd come from Hopewell, Virginia. His mom didn't have much. They, he didn't get no money from the streets. He'd get a visit every now and then from these old people. I, I'm assuming they were his grandparents. But DC used to always come up with elaborate ways to get money. And with him being fat, DC's thing was, I'll let you hit me. Like, you could body shot DC, slap DC, slap him in the back of his head, hit him in his ribs, and he was so fat that to really, really hurt DC, you had to have a lot of power to get through all that padding on DC's body. Pause. DC tells this dude in the pub one day, and we're standing by the ice machine, getting ready to go out for chow. And we got something that day that DC wants. And DC's trying to get it off somebody's tray. And he's like, who's trying to get that lick? Who wants to get that lick? Meaning who wants to who wants to hit me for whatever is on your tray? I told you, some of these dudes are nuts. There's another dude that, that wasn't even really going to go to child because he's got so much commissary. He don't even really ever go to the child hall. I was one of those dudes at one point. I met a lot of dudes like that. You get your commissary up. I'm not going over there for, for this stuff. DC tells dude, he's like, dude's like, yo, I got you. You know what I mean? You gonna let me hit you? And all I gotta do is go over there and give you the tray. And DC's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, all right, man. You ready? And DC's like, hold on, man. Hold on, hold for you hit me. Where you gonna hit me at? He's like, well, that's a good tray. I'm gonna slap you. He's like, all right, man. That's what's up. You can slap me, you know what I mean? But like, you know what I mean? Don't knock my teeth out or nothing, man. He's like, yeah, all right. I got you. I got you. DC standing by the ice machine, and we're watching the guard. So when the guard turns her head, we can be like, all right, go, go, go. DC cell was all over the top, and DC's trying to get out with the child. DC is standing there, and he's not really, you know, the guard keeps looking at us, so he's, like, not tensed up, not paying attention. And we're looking at the guard, we're like, go. As soon as we say go, old boy reaches out and slaps DC with these big-ass man mitts. With these big ass ham hawks. He slapped DC. DC goes sideways. Ricochets off the ice machine. And is snoring. Before he hits the floor. He falls back. Hits his head on the wall. And slides down the wall. And all you hear is. <laughs> DC is sitting there. One eye open. One eye half closed. Unconscious. Beside the ice machine. He slapped this dude so damn hard. They called Chow right after D.C. got slapped out. Everybody left for Chow. Now D.C.'s knocked out beside the ice machine, and the guard is banging on the window for him to get up, trying to figure out what what's going on. I just turned my head for a second. I look back, there's an unconscious dude beside the ice machine. <coughs> so not only did D.C. get his dumb ass slapped all the way to sleep, he didn't get the tray. Dude made it up, gave him a tray further down the line. But that day, he didn't get to eat at all. I remember dude gave him a soup and a bag of chips that night because he felt bad because DC was out, you know, for probably a minute and a half, two minutes, unconscious. I got so many of these crazy stories, man. It's hard to pick from. This next one is 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 nasty, but it's also a big reality in how a lot of these men get down. We have this group called Priya that comes to the prison. And Priya is the Prison Rape Elimination Act. There is a sign above the phone with Priya's number for you to call. If you're in prison, there's like a hotline that you can dial to report a rape. Somebody victimizing people. The Priya people come to the prison every now and then and do their walkthroughs to see living conditions, if anything looks out of order. We are pushing, I've told y'all before, I work maintenance. I push a cart full of tools around. There might be anything from grinders to whatever, but every day I've got a set set of tools on the cart. Screwdrivers, you know, you name it. Wrenches, things you need to fix things within the prison. My job was to go around all day fixing things. Great job. I loved it. It got me out of my cell and everybody else was locked down. 
It allowed me to, you know, be able to move around. Good job. We're going down what's called the VCE hallway, which is where they do school. They do church, visitation, your trades like electrical, you know, plumbing. And the Priya people are walking towards us. We're walking towards them. I glance up, I see them. They glance up, they see me. They're just doing their job. These are, you know, middle class white people, nice clothing, nice shoes. You can tell they're, you know, on edge because they're inside a prison and not used to this. So they're looking in classrooms at, at the guys that are sitting there learning their trades, looking in the classrooms at the, at the guys that are, you know, going to school. They go through the visitation room, look around in there, and they're just walking with an officer talking. As I'm getting ready to pass them, there's a bathroom on our left-hand side that's got a door. This door does not lock from the inside because if you were to grab a correctional officer or a guard and throw her in there or a male guard and throw him in there and start killing them or raping them or doing anything like that, the last thing they want is that door to be able to lock and them not to be able to open it to get in there. So the bathroom doors in the hallways didn't lock. Tell me why the Priya people open the bathroom door and there is this big black man and this young white dude in there. Big black man standing up. Young white dude's on his knees. Enough said. The Priya people look like they have just witnessed a murder. They all jump back because they're part of this organization, but they have never seen what all the rest of us have seen that actually takes place. They've heard the stories, they've dealt with things, but they've never seen it firsthand. Sergeant reaches in, grabs the little white dude, and they try to make this seem like it was a forceful event when it, when it wasn't. These two dudes walked around together all the time. They were like a thing, you know what I mean? Like they, they had a gay love thing going on. He grabs the white dude out, slings the white dude over to the Priya. The white dude is, you know, this all happens in a split second. It's like, what's going on? You know what I mean? And the Priya people get him and they start walking him down the hallway. They take the big black dude, scruff him up, put handcuffs on him, bring him out. And they got the little white dude walking him off like he's just been victimized. Like somebody just forcefully threw something in his mouth that he wasn't looking to eat. Crazy, crazy things, man. I'm going to give y'all one more before I jump out of here. It's Friday, so I got jobs to run, payroll to do. But, you know, I've missed y'all. Got to give y'all this content. Sorry about that last story, man. That's just what it is. That's the reality. That's the stuff people don't want to tell y'all. And I'm going to go and do this again. We ain't all gay. You know, you hear everybody they in there just humping each other. No, we are not. There are dudes out here that are gay just like there's dudes in there. We ain't all doing that. Last one I'm going to give you, man, I had this young black dude who used to sleep above me on the bunk. I don't remember his name. It's been so, so, so long ago, man. But this dude had a habit of sleeping with his arm and his leg hanging off the top bunk. And I would get up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, take a piss or something, and I'd bump his leg and I'd shove his leg. And he'd pull his leg back up. I'd get up and his hand would smack me in the face. I'd smack his hand. And I kept telling him, I said, look, man, you got to break that habit. Of hanging off the side of that bunk. If you drop, that's over a five foot drop straight to concrete. You are gonna crack your head. I mean, that's just how I've always slept since I was a little kid. Well, you're not a little kid no more. And I'm not I'm not trying to get up in the middle of the night and your dusty ass, dirty ass foot kicks me right in my face. You know what I mean? Like keep your body parts on the bunk, man. I'm like, and furthermore, you should be sleeping on your back. Like you're going to prison, you don't wanna be sleeping on your stomach. He's like, well, I know I'm safe in here with you. I ain't got nothing to worry about. I can sleep on my stomach. I said, that ain't the point. You need to train yourself to sleep on your back. You see how I sleep on my back? Well, I sleep on my back to the wall. You don't never see me sleep on my stomach. Dude, don't listen to me, man. Right? This stuff will continue to go on. Y'all think that's no big deal. I'm trying to look out for the youngin'. I don't want to see him get himself all hurt. It always goes bad. I am sleep one night. And I'm not a heavy sleeper. The littlest things will wake me up. And as I'm asleep, it sounds like 
like an earthquake. It sounds like a dump truck bed just dropped. Sounds like somebody just jumped off the building and into the middle of my cell. <clears throat> I sit up and this dude is laid on the ground and he is out. And there is blood everywhere. I turn the light on. I start looking around. He's laying on his side and he's all the way out. He's going to come down and clip the side of the countertop and then ricochet it off the stool and then smash the floor, right? Countertop is thick metal. The stool that's mounted in front of the countertop is stainless steel on the top, but thick stainless steel. I'm trying to wake him up and he's laying on his side. I'm slapping him, slapping him. I'm like, oh man, this dude is messed up. Meanwhile, the pool of blood is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. He comes to, he starts oh, like moaning and stuff. Oh, he's all hurt, all messed up. And what happened next was something that you, you could see in a movie and it wouldn't do it no justice. When he lifted his head up off the ground to try to get up, his whole ear was flopped down and just hanging. When he fell off the side of the bunk, he clipped the side of the countertop above his ear and ripped his ear all the way off to where it looked like there was a thread hanging on. I'm in there scared to call the guards because they're going to think I did something to him. I'm scared to do anything because from the looks of things, it looks like he just got messed up real bad. They're not going to believe. They're not trying to hear that this dude just fell off the bunk. This is what I'm thinking, right? So he's standing there and I'm like, yo, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. And he's like, what, what, what? And I'm like, don't touch it. And he's just finally sat up. And I'm like, bro, your ear, like your ear jank is gone. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, yo, your shit is fucked up, homeboy. Like, you ain't got no clue. He gets up, and if you ain't never seen a black dude turn white, you ain't never seen a black dude that had his ear hanging off his head. He gets his little mirror, and he looks, and he's been touching it. And I guess just even what he feels, his brain isn't letting him register, like letting him register what really happened to him. He takes the mirror and puts it to the side and sees his ear and turns pale, turns white. All the brown in him left. Dude turned just like like three different shades lighter than a light-skinned dude. And looked like he was ready to pass out. Like he was ready to throw up. So I said, fuck, man. I go to the door and I start kicking. Boom, 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 boom. Put my hand out. I'm waving my hand up and down, trying to get the attention of the guard. Boom, 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 boom. She comes over to intercom. Williams, what's wrong? Stop kicking the door. I yell at the door, we need medical, we need medical, we need medical. Takes them maybe, maybe five, six minutes, man. They show up to my cell and they come running in. They got a nurse, a couple of COs, not running, just trotting across the pod to my cell. And they're going, what's wrong? And I'm like, as they're coming, I'm telling them, dude fell off the bunk. You called us in for this? I'm like, he fell off the bunk. He's hurt. His ear broke off. They come to the cell. They see it. The nurse doesn't know what to do. She's young. She's new. She ain't been doing this a long time. She ain't never seen nobody with a damn ear torn off right. So she's looking. She hands him, like, some paper towels and stuff she had on the cart and tells him, you know, keep it on. First thing the guards do, bring me out the cell, put me in handcuffs, and they're trying to take me to the hole. Dude is telling him, no, I fell off the top bunk. I fell off the bunk in my sleep. He didn't do nothing to me. I've got an institutional record for violence, for fighting. So they're thinking I done got into it with this dude in the middle of the night. The only thing that saved me, and this is weird, this is crazy. The only thing that saved me, they took me up to the third floor, put me in a sergeant's office. Um, the lieutenant was somewhere else that night. They brought him over to the cell to look around to see if there was like any signs of a scuffle. The only thing that saved me is when he fell off that top bunk, some of the meat that was attached to what used to be his ear was still on the side of the countertop where he initially hit. The lieutenant seen it. They came in there, took pictures of it, brought me back from the third floor, gave me a mop bucket, some cleaning supplies, locked me in my cell and told me clean that shit up. I didn't see dude no more. Dude went off to the infirmary. I don't know if he got shipped to another prison. I'm, not, I'm guessing he just went to another part of the prison. I got a new cellmate the following day. 
The cell reeked of blood. Smelled like that iron penny smell that you smell with blood. Crazy, crazy stories, man. And like I told you, there's a million of these. I spent so much time from my younger days up until my mid-30s locked up that you see things and, you know, I don't plan my videos. I don't plan what I'm going to say. I just figure out what today's topic is. I turn the camera on and I give it to you. And that's why my channel is continuing to do the numbers it's doing and it's continuing to grow because I'm authentic. I'm real. Everything I give you all is fact. It's not scripted. I don't have to sit and think about it. You can just tell. When these things are real, they're real. Everything I tell y'all is real. Yeah, man, craziness. But like I've told y'all before, man, these prisons, these institutions, detention centers, they're just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life to all my real ones. And all some real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute.